Here in the cardiovascular system, we're talking about the heart, and I know we're kind of pushing it past the sense of biology and, and physiology and all that, but we talk about heart, the heart of, as in terms of emotion. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness, and wellness includes emotional wellness. And part of that is we talk about emotional wellness, and I do this in workshops and things. I say, well, what does it mean to be well? And, uh, and people will say, you know, usually people will include an emotional component. I want to be happy. Well, wellness is not necessarily about happy all the time, happy, 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 right? Just 24-7 level happy. Really, the human experience is all about balanced emotion or, the, you know, the, the, that's the goal of, uh, in the wellness category is to be very balanced in our emotions. So ultimately, we can have our emotional, you know, sort of uh, ups and downs, but recognize that that the difference between emotion and love. Let me let me suggest, okay, so I've gone, I talk about the four essentials for life, food, water, air, and love. And I'm talking about really referring to love here as a nutrient, okay? Uh, you know, these four essential nutrients. Love is a nutrient. Like, well, you know, that seems a stretch, Peter. You know, I say, like, well, let me, let me offer a little deeper perspective on this. I'm gonna suggest to you that love is not an emotion. Love is not an emotion, right? Fear and uh, uh, elation, joy, uh, those are all emotions, right? Those are all things that are, are emotional, they pass through the brain. You can, you can tie a, a, a physiological uh, response, I mean, my, my, and, and your body can actually affect your emotions. Your body can actually influence what kind of emotions you're feeling. And we can influence those emotions through essential oils. We can, there are some compounds and chemicals that literally affect the amygdala, which is the, the emotional center in the brain. So when we inhale an oil, it affects the emotional center. Anything to me that, is, that can be influenced from outside sources like that is not love, right? Love conquers all, right? You know, go, go to Corinthians. All that whole discourse on love that you hear in, in the weddings. Love is faithful. Love is kind. Love is, love is, love is. Love isn't. Love isn't. Okay. So all of those things, if you look at them, they're not emotional based. Okay. Love is a state. It's a choice. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually an essential nutrient. Okay. It is, it is the, the formative glue that runs through us. Okay. God loves us into existence at every moment. And he does that through breath. His love comes into us. His life and love comes into us through breath, which is why I focus so much on breath. Not only is it the most important nutrient, the oxygen coming in, so if I breathe a little bit better, I've got more oxygen coming in, but it's intimately tied to love. So, you know, you know I like to breathe, and I like all this conscious breathing, and I'm bringing in. So here's the issue about love. We can, we can work, and this again, I'm, I know I'm including this in the cardiovascular system, but we, we, I, I think you relate to me when I, when I say people, we, as our culture, we understand people have died of a broken heart, right? We've heard of that. Or someone has a heart attack and you ask, oh, some, it broke his heart, you know, he died of a broken heart. And, and so literally there's this, we understand this sort of connection between the, the heart and our state of love. Okay, so in this love category, right, let's talk about the love category and in food, water, air, and love. I know we haven't done it, we haven't broken down it this way all that much, but food, water, air, and love. What can we do in the love category and how do we apply our wellness strategy to the love category? Stop poisoning ourselves in the love category, flood the body, flood the, the body, the soul, the being with love, nutrient, and manage stress in that category. So absolutely we can have the essential oils to help us level our emotions, right? Our emotions can help us, can, can help us experience that we have love in our life or can hurt us, right? So where do we need to let go of toxic emotions? Emotions are really the toxin of the love category, okay? Uh, thoughts can be toxic to the love category, and then memories and experiences, bad experiences, things, bad things that happen to us are toxic to the love category. So I mean, I'm going to say again I mean, you, I'm gonna, that God loves us into existence at every moment. Okay, so there is really no lack of love in our lives, none whatsoever. God is not sitting back, eh, looking down, going, "Who deserves love today?" 
hmm, you haven't earned any love today, you know, I'm, I'm going to withhold the love. No, does not do that. He is showering us, flooding us, pushing love on us, although love isn't pushy, right? So it, you, you realize right away that if you understand love, you can't have God force love on us, otherwise it's not love. Our free will must be participating in this. We must love him back. So this is this issue of love that uh, it, it, you know, it starts to, it's not, you can think of it mechanically. And, and I think some people look at the, the, the Star Wars, you know, Luke used the force and, and it kind of using, and, and if you've ever, do you remember that um, uh, there was a, the secret, the, the movie, the secret, anyone who watched that, they, they, a lot of people referred to the force of the universe and, and as if you're kind of plugging in to God as, as an, as an energy source, as an electricity source, this, we can use this love. Uh, and we can plug in. And the thing is, you know, God lets us, you, you know, do that, but it's so much better and more powerful when we acknowledge this source of infinite source of love, that it's not something I, I plug in and plug out and plug in and plug out. I plug in when I want it and then, and then unplug. No, how about we just stay plugged into the source of love the whole time? Okay. So this idea of love versus emotion and love is experienced with God. There's only one source of love. love. God is the true source of love. So here's the thing where we, again, we can use oils. I'm pointing over here. We can use oils to help us through those rocky emotional points, right? And especially here's like Sara oil and Valor oil. Uh, and we've used Release uh, and Sacred Mountain. Here's some these. We've used these oils. You, you have these unless you've used them all up as part of the program, but chances are you have some of these oils and they can help us create space. Okay, we're talking about the negative. How do we stop the poison in the love category? We probably have to let go of some of these memories, of some of these emotional habits, right? That's where we'd be release, right? I've got the release oil and help me to release emotional patterns. That is not a reflection of how much love I have in my life. It's not even a reflection of how, how capable I am of experiencing love and giving love in my life. It's just an emotional pattern, just like massage therapy, where you'd have a, you'd have a pattern you know, from holding kids. You'd be lifting up your kids, so you, this shoulder is high, this hip is high because you've been lifting up kids the whole time. Well, that's just a pattern. We can release that pattern with massage, right? And we massage that all of a sudden, ah, oh, I'm down. So these emotional patterns, habits, these are not, this is not love. It's not even tied to our, our love category. Love is deeper than that. It's much, much deeper than that. It's bigger and deeper and it's, and it's absolutely nourishing. Okay, so how do we nourish ourselves with love? So that's the stop the poison in the love category. Let's try to manage emotions because emotions and thoughts are probably the most, the most damaging thing we have in the love category. So if we have a a damaging thought that you know that, that I, I can't indulge in it. I say, okay, I'm going to redirect. I breathe in God's love, right? And I, this was this was a, a, a tape I listened to, and it was a, a Trappist monk, and he said, I "Breathe in your name, Peter. I love you." And that's God. That's Jesus saying, "I love you, Peter. I love you." Breathe in your name. Breathe out. I love you. I did that for. Uh, months and months and months uh, as I started to try to get every time I had a thought every time I had an emotional position this is before I even knew the oils uh, thought and emotion that was in the downer side that I was down on myself that I was you know just it was a program I was running I would breathe in that Peter I love you and and working on just that message of love that counteracts that under that that, that really can wipe away now, like I said, we add essential oils to that, and I can take the release oil, and the moment I have a, a, a negative thought or a negative emotion or a negative memory, I can put a little tiny bit of release, breathe that in, breathe in, let go, breathe in, love, Peter, I love you. And so anyway, very simple, very simple little exercise. Okay, so we can, we can let go of the negative in this category, we can also flood the body with nutrients. How do we flood the body with love? Well, if God's love is given to us through breath, then breath is the most powerful way to connect to this. And so here's how I do this. Uh, you know how we do the listening breath. So I breathe into my body 
and I'll say, you know, here's my love cup. You've heard of love cup, you know, fill up your love cup, right? Glass half empty, glass half full, fill up my love cup. So I'm gonna breathe in to my body, and even if I just considered my, my cup or breathe into my, my body, my, my person, and then say, okay, imagine the love cup, show me the love cup. Is it empty, is it full, is it overflowing, is it all bone dry, right? So I breathe in, breathe back to my being, listen, and then, okay, and, you know, immediately what happens to me when I do this is I realize that there's many, many love cups. There's a love cup for every category in my life, right? And so every relationship has a love cup. Every, and so I've got all these love cups. And so it's not so easy to say, okay, now give me a, a total. I've got, I've got, as I breathe into my area where my love cups are, I've got hundreds, okay, hundreds of love cups that all are, are in some state of, of being full. And the thing is, um, there's only one source of love. It's all God. So I am clearly, internally, I've broken up God into all these little pieces and I've got him in, you know, that this relationship and this relationship and this relationship, which is to some degree you could think appropriate. But so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to breathe in. Here are all my love cups, right? That was just my image. Here's my love cups. Now, is God withholding any love from me? Absolutely not. He is flooding me with all, he wants to fill up every one of those love cups, every relationship love cup, every memory love cup, every one of those love cups he wants to fill up. So I'm going to let him. Okay. So I'm going to breathe in and I'm gonna imagine just this perfect shower of love and those dribbles hit those love cups and they don't spill at all. They're just, of course, I, I, maybe that's nice to have the abundance feeling of spilling out, but I'm going to fill up those love cups. Every one of those love cups in my life fills, fills up and just absolutely to the top, maybe even spills over a little bit, just some extra. So I'm breathing in and I'm imagining all those love cups fill up. Now, if you wanted to be more specific, if you had a particular thing that your memory or your parents or, you know, whatever, and you go in and say, okay, I, I want to focus on that. I could just focus on that. I say, okay, take that love cup and breathe in to that one love cup. And, you know, wow, my body fights, my being fights that. You know what I did? I breathe into that love cup and God's filling it up and there's a hole in the bottom. You know, there's a hole in the bottom. And so the, I, what I'm saying is there's no way that God could possibly fill up that love cup. That love cup is broken. Okay. And, and so I'm um, you know, like, is that true? No, God can heal all these things. So now I'm going to say, okay, God, I'm going to breathe into that love cup and heal it. Heal that love cup. Seal it up. And that, actually what he did, I mean, that love cup was just sort of a, it was a kind of a lead, broken, ugly love cup that with a hole all broken out in the bottom. And he turned it into something absolutely gorgeous. Just a beautiful crystal goblet kind of thing. So here's this new love cup that he replaced it with the best of the best, okay? And so I'm going to cry here. But um, So he, he breathe, I breathe in. Okay, God, give me, repair that love cup. And now fill it overflowing. So he fills up that love cup overflowing. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, as a Christian, I, it, it was, what God showed me was a chalice. I mean, it was, I, I didn't realize this until he filled it with wine. Okay. And so here in this love cup, he filled it up and it wasn't water. It was wine, which of course we know as the blood of Jesus. So what I'm saying is there, God is, he, he takes it, you if you work in the love category and you're not working with God, it's going to get real frustrating because you're going to continue to work with this very peripheral, very usury sense of, of, of where love is coming from and what love is. It is an absolutely abundant, free-flowing source from God. You don't earn it. You, don't, you have to have it in order to be functional. It is a nutrient. He's never going to withhold a nutrient from you. It is essential. It is the thing that builds your, it, he loves you into existence at every moment. Okay, so stress, I think that the biggest category in our, in our world, which is stress, is the problem is we don't have this right relationship with love. We don't experience love. We think love is an emotion and, and love can come and go. And therefore, if I don't feel good, then I'm not loved. That is false. And that if we just get rid of that definition of love, get rid of that experience. Okay, so we've got oils that can help us balance those emotions and thoughts. The oils can help us with those emotional thoughts, but we've got to do the rest of the work, which is invite that love into our lives. Breathe it in. Saturate your body with love. Try that a single breath. Work with it a little bit. Try to work with filling up those love cups. This is just one image. It's just one thing that I do. God does not withhold anything. So I breathe in everything I need for that particular relationship. One day at a time, happy wellness.
We'll see you tomorrow.